You was close to Vegas Seals. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was my brother, man. Like, me and Vega, like, that's Bobby Terrell Ward. You know, mm -hmm. my name Terrell. You know, we both had our birthdays. Back-to-back uh, -back his was November 5th and uh, mine November 9th. But we locked in back in middle school. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spent nights at each other how this way before the rap shit, the trap shit. Like, me and bro go back since uh, little kids, man. Like, mm -hmm. that was my boy. You hear me? Like, that really, like, hit my heart, like, when he got out of here, bro, because it wasn't his time. But, you know, who am I to say? You know, God got that call. But, man, you know, he resting in peace. He was a good dude. You know, his kids, you know, they going to live on and be straight. You know, uh, shout out uh, Kiki. Mm -hmm. Shout out uh, Lucky, his brother, more Kiki Jr., that's my boy. You know, we locked in, too. You know, we, we communicate on a regular basis. Oh, shout out Vega, man. His birthday is a national holiday, too. So I want everybody around the Lou, everybody around the world, man. It's officially a, a national holiday. Like, it's locked in. So November 5th, from this year on, it's a national holiday. Holiday. Yeah, yeah, man. Before we get deep into the interview, man, uh, just name me one song that you love from Vegas Seals real quick. Man. One of my favorite songs, I'm going to say, from Vega, uh, he, he did a song with L.A. Foles, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a song of, uh, about their mama, and, uh, you know, I lost my mama uh, back in 15, Okay. so that song right there, man, like, it really plays a good, you know, a good fit in my heart, because uh, it touched me, bro, like, I, you know, ain't, ain't nothing like your mama, nah, it ain't. you only get one mom, so. Yeah, that's one of my favorite songs. Well, you're not originally from St. Louis, you know what I'm saying? You come from, uh, I want to say Minnesota, to be correct. Yeah, yeah, I come from Minnesota. I moved here in 99. In 99? Uh, okay. My daddy, little sister, shout out her and my Uncle Terry, her name Beverly. You know, a lot of people know her from the school systems around, you know, she real known. Okay. She took me, my brother Will, my sister Ebony in, and, uh, you know, we got here in 99, I ain't looked back. Like, we come from foster care. You know, we stay with a lot of different families uh, back in St. Paul, Minnesota. And, uh, you know, we seen a lot, been through a lot, but we blessed to, you know, be part of our blood. And, you know, she took us in, treated us just like her kids. Shout out uh, TJ and Tanisha, you know, raised like brother and sisters. You know, they're my first cousin, but they're my sister and brothers, you know. Real talk, man. Um, when you moved to St. Louis, um, you came to uh, st louis city man what was life like growing up in the st louis city area you know what i'm saying uh i mean it was it was easy to adapt to but when we first moved i come from hazel we we moved out to hazelwood oh, okay so straight off the greyhound we moved straight out of hazelwood mm -hmm. but uh you know uh new environment we went to the hazelwood schools like my sister and tanisha which is uh my other sister they went to hazelwood junior high hazelwood central Okay. And we all went to Walker Elementary. And, you know, we would have went, but we moved to the south side. We moved to the south side. You know, we got adapted to that environment. And that, that environment was a little more fast-paced than coming from uh, Hazelwood. Mm. So uh, that's why I grew up, like, you know, uh, real south side. You know, I live by that. You know, I ain't into the streets. You know, I do me with this trucking. Yeah. You know, that that's, that's what I do it for. Me, my kids. My family and my close friends and loved ones, that's who I do it for. For sure, man. What inspired you to get into the trucking business, my brother? Man. Man. Uh, I'll say my uncles, man. I got two uncles, which, you know, what I said early in the interview, my Uncle Terry, you know, he was one of the ones that raised me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he took me in. And, you know, uh, when I first came to St. Louis, he was into printing. So he used okay. to always tell us, like, this is a good trade. You know, y'all get older, you know, uh, start y'all lives and family. Mm -hmm. Y'all might want to look at printing. Okay. But he kind of went through uh, some things with the white people. And, uh, man, it, it kind of got rough on them, you know, losing a couple jobs, going on strike a few times. Then they sent them out to some new uh, companies. It was too far out. So one day he woke up and uh, wanted to go to truck driving school. And, uh, man, he, he pushed himself, you know, us as kids at the time, we helped push him, motivate mm -hmm. him. He got through his school, uh, got all his, uh, credentials and everything he needed. And, uh, he got over that road and made real sacrifices for us, you know, as his kids and the family and, uh, ain't look back. So when I seen that, it just really opened my eyes at a young age. I'm like, man, you know, this like, you know, my father mm -hmm. and, uh, 
you know, I just seen him like go the extra mile, bro. And, and uh, yeah, he did a great job, man, like raising us and, you know, the whole nine yards and the truck driving money really showed in the household. I'm going to say that. So as I got, you know, out of school, uh, I didn't go to college. Right. So I always want to make more money. I started off with the city of St. Louis. I worked for Greyhound. Mm-hmm. I had okay. a couple cleaning com- uh cleaning company jobs and stuff. And uh man, I just wanted to, you know, uh make the real money. So I started off in a dump truck. Okay. With the city. I left there. My uncle got me on at his job, United Fruit Produce. At the time, you know, I was like mm, early twenties, coming in making eight, nine hundred a week. You know, around that time, that was good money. You know, I had two kids. Shout out my daughter, Tanala. Shout out my son, Lil Rel. Mm-hmm. You know, at the time, and that was my motivation. After that, I ain't looked back. Okay. So I always wanted to move up to the class A CDL, which I'm doing that now. Yeah. Now, uh, with the trucking business, just like it's been like a crazy surge of people getting into this business the past few years. Why do you think so many people uh, have decided that, you know, the truck business is the way to go? You know what I'm saying? Hey, it's the new dope game. I'm, I'm just keeping it on it, like, cause I heard somebody say that it's better than having a PhD right now. Oh yeah, this this <laughs> killing, this killing for real, bro. This 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 up there with the doctors, bro. Like, I got you know partners that own trucks and you know that's owner ops. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that's making real good money. I mean, I got one of my boys. He mm. just sent me his invoice. He cleared five hundred thousand. Mm. You know, and and that's one year. That's and uh, he sweet. he told me it was a light year for him, so that just tell you right there, like it, that was it's light real money, yeah. Damn. Yeah, he he called me. He said, "Bro, this this was light, but I'm gonna mm-hmm. shoot you something for motivation." So, yeah, I mean they they keeping up with real doctors and lawyers and judges, bro. Mm-hmm. Like the trucking industry is where it's at. <laughs> this is like whether you with a company like me myself, I'm with Frito Lay. Yeah, I run with the chips and dip. I got a set route. I run overnights. It is off uh, seniority. Okay, it's good money coming in. Uh, great benefits, retirement, pension. So I do see myself here for a few years and work my way into mm. the next level. And the next level going to get my own truck. So uh, I ain't going to stop till I get it. Right. Uh, the owner-operator uh, definition is uh, you basically own your own company. And what is uh, the main thing to get is authority. So you, get your, you start with your LLC. You go from the LLC, you work on getting your own authority. Now, the authority is, this is your trucking company. So, me, as Rail Southside, it'll be Rail Southside Transport. So, now, everything is underneath my LLC. And the authority is over everything. So, you know, my business and everything, you know, for me to uh, 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 get connected with the uh, uh, brokers, okay, the dispatchers and stuff. And uh, that's the main thing they look for because when you got your own authority, you cut out the middleman. So that's like right now, if I was to get be an owner op and I went over to Frito-Lay, I won't be able to uh, have my own authority because I'm going to be under Frito-Lay. So when you are owner op, you want to get your own authority to make the real money. Now, with you being an owner operator, how do you go about your business? You know what I'm saying? Like as far as like picking up loads, you know, setting up your routes. Uh, I mean, it's different ways. Like I say. Shout out Amazon, like that's a big company. Like you get with them, oh, yeah. and uh, they got low boys, but they do great. You see, Amazon, it's a catch to it. They yeah. you will get in good, and next thing you know, uh, you the lowest. You you got one store. You got some people been here for years. That's mm-hmm. five, seven stores. So mm-hmm. all you doing is uh, building a portfolio, right. and you know you show up and show out. You know you get the load there on time, and you go up. Okay. It's like you know passing a test in school. You know, you're going to move on to the next level. You ain't going to stay with the uh, same test or whatever. You know, you're going to move on to the next. So that's all mm-hmm. it is. You can really plan day to day unless you want to get with a contract. But most owner ops out here, they are just uh, playing day to day because you don't want to, you know, pin yourself down with a, uh, a contract. Oh, but man. if you get a good contract and you know this contract is worth it and it pay real good, you can mm-hmm. roll with it. But, you know, it's going to be set times mm-hmm. and schedules like a job. That's like, shout out my bro, uh, TJ and G Bell. We locked in. You hear me? Like, it's family over everything, and they doing their thing. They mm. running up to Cali one, uh, once a week. Mm. And, you know, I say that load is, I ain't in their pockets, but it, <laughs> it, it, it's some nice change, and it's over 10 grand. Mm. So, with that being said, like, that's what you want. You want the long uh, miles, 
you want the good loads and you you know you just want to make it there safe make it back it's a lot of people that's coming out of jail and right. you know they land opportunities in this trucking right. business you know what i'm saying so right. you know what of uh what advice can you give them as far as like how to get into it and uh how many and then uh how many years would it take for them to be on operating really you can't really like speak on yours because you could get your CDL today, next week, you're on or out. Like oh, you, just that fast. Yeah, like you can go and buy a truck. You can have a truck before you even get your CDL. I know a few mm. people like that, you know, that already got their truck before they even started trucking school. So mm. it's just all up to you. Like you could be you could be an owner op, but you can just run your semis, your fleet. Mm -hmm. And you got drivers in each truck or, you know, that one set truck mm -hmm. and you ain't got to worry about it. Yeah, is that something that you plan on doing as far as like having yeah. your own fleet? You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And if so, uh, elaborate a little bit more on that. Yeah, most definitely. That's why I'm headed. Like, I'm headed there because, like I say, it's cutting the middleman out. And, like, I work for a company, so I'm waiting on a check. With that, as soon as you pull your load, wherever you're going, you turn your paperwork in, you let the uh, broker know, you finna send him a copy. Once he get a copy, they cut the check right then and there. Right away. Right so, to that bank yeah, account, huh? Yeah, right in the, right in. <laughs> Right then and there, you ain't no waiting, none of that. Like Straight it's up. official, bro. Like it's real money in this. Like mm. I'm, I'm a stress it till I can't stress it no more. This the new dope game, bro. Right, it's really life changing right now. You know what real I'm saying? Life. Real life, like I could, I could really speak for myself. Like you know, I, I, I've been down, you know, in apartments, mm. and you know, even with my baby mama, uh, right. you know, we stayed low income. And like just to see where I just you know came from from years five years to how I just expanded to where I'm at like I'm in the process of uh, building my credit right and uh, I'm gonna work on a house and mm -hmm. I did all this like mm -hmm. I say in four years four and a half years. Okay, man, that's incredible, bro. Because I also wanted to know um what are some ways you plan on giving back to the community through truck driving? You know, uh, I got I got some stuff uh that works now. Uh, shout out uh, Bruce Franks, aka uh, Oops, one of my brothers from the South Side. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes, and, sir. Uh, you know, shout mm -hmm. out him. Uh, I'm gonna uh, reach back out to him. I want to sit down with a couple of the Ottomans around the city, and uh, we gonna uh, do a lot of community service. Mm -hmm. We gonna give back. Like you know, it's gonna get to the point like holidays, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. Christmas. I want to give away uh, toys, toy drives. I want to do uh, back to school mm -hmm. events. My biggest thing. I got something I'm trying to do in the city uh, for is like help training. And it's going to be really focused on bagging up. But I am going to try to uh, see if I can start like a little mini trucking school. Mm -hmm. And I just want to help like the poverty, the trenches. Like I just want to like help our people as one, like bring everybody together. Like early in the interview where we talked about when I was like uh, community service and stuff. Like, that's big. You know, I want to clean up the community. We go in our roughest <clears throat> neighborhoods, you know, as a uh, Walnut Park, you know, uh, uh, spots on the west side where we got a lot of vacant houses and stuff. Yeah. You know, clean it up, man. It'd be real trashy, man. Clean this stuff up, you know, make the uh, community look uh, neat Damn and turn right. the city up. Because right. I'm going to keep it 100. We so turned in the city. Everybody really want to come here, but they scared because <laughs> what's the first thing they hear about St. Louis? Murder capital. Right. That's all you hear, bro. Oh, oh, STL. I oh, fuck with them. Them some stand up, you know, people down there, but they cutthroat. And East St. Louis had that title for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they had it, but it's like St. Louis is like it, it's it's a big way, and and the thing I never liked, but I can't never judge nobody, like. People will get their buzz here and then shake and go to the next city. Yeah. You know, like from our radio people. Yeah. You know, I ain't gonna put yeah. no names out there, but people know what's going on. You know, they they know mm -hmm. who it's directed to. You know, even with like certain rappers, like they get the buzz here, get it going, and then move down to Atlanta or Texas or yeah. you know, the <laughs> next city and then turn up. And then next thing you know, they repping that city hard. Right, uh, I'm from I'm from uh, STL, but uh, Atlanta, where it's at. <laughs> oh, we want to keep this shit here. Like we can have, we we can have it the same way everybody else got it. We Thanks. can have it just like Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We can have it just like Miami. We can have it just like Texas. We can have it like all that, bro. If we all come together and just stop getting on the back door and uh, the BS with each other yeah. and, and the sneak dissing and the, yeah, yeah. the hate, that's big here, bro. 
That's what they need to make a song about. Forget the P. Let's make a song about the hate because there's so mm. much hate here, bro. Facts. For, for nothing, though. Like, mm -hmm. hating on the next man for nothing. Everybody got 24 hours, bro. 24 right. hours. All right. Let's do it. How you feel about this term, uh, play a P, the P word, man? man. Gunner got this shit going crazy. Niggas saying, people man, from St. Louis. I ain't, even, I, I ain't even really <laughs> tapped in, bro. Like, oh, okay. I, 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 I hear about it. I see the media. Well, let me ask you, man. Have you heard that term being used in St. Louis, like in the yeah. past? Yeah. Okay. I heard it from uh, P Level Glow. Okay, so P Level Glow and Captain. Like, he's like, yeah, like, dude, like, yeah, I've been following dude for a few years, and mm. I've seen him with the, 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 uh p chains i see his post everything he got the blue p on there he was doing this like two three years ago and, oh, wow. and you know so on from there so Damn. like yeah dude a real you know stand-up guy man i've been following him you know we ain't never like tapped in or ran across each other or nothing but mm. uh saying like a cool dude but yeah i seen it from him so i just feel like that's his way man you think uh people been stealing st louis lingo for a while and in, as far as the industry, you know what I'm saying? The rap industry and stuff. And because I feel like people come here, you know, they take bits and pieces, they get their bread and then oh, they yeah, leave. Yeah, but you, you know, feel me? You, you know, St. Louis, yeah, we, we start the lingo years back. This, this before Nelly times. Like, you know, it's just, we just, it's hot. Like, me being raised here, bro, and mm -hmm. we used to say pop, me and my brother. Like, when we came here, it was soda. Yeah. Like, we used to go to the fridge right now. We want a pop. You're like, what the hell is yeah, a pop? Yeah, my auntie and them stopping us in our tracks. Like, no, nah, it's a soda. So, <laughs> me and my brother got with that lingo. That was back in 99. So, now oh, it's man. like we locked all the way in. We tapped in in the city. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, like me, man, I'm just... You know, I, I'm who I am. You hear me? I don't fit in. I don't be trying to be like the next person, bro. I'm connected. East St., uh, South City, West Side, North Side, the counties, even St. Charles. I got a couple mm -hmm. people out there in Winsville and St. Okay. Charles Creed Court, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't discriminate, but, uh, man, I'm just glad the man I am today, bro. And like I say, uh, with this trucking, bro, like, I, I really leveled up, you know, uh, bossed all the way up to the max, like, seeing myself come from nothing. All right, then, you know, we, uh, man, for years, you know, it's always been the city versus county yeah. thing here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, what's your, what's your view on that? You know what I'm saying? I don't discriminate. Yeah. Like I say, 99, I moved straight to Hazelwood. Moved on the south side three years later. Mm hmm I was in fourth grade. Went to a school called Fravel. That's where I reside. Stayed on the south side all the way. We moved to the north, but we still Southside School District. We still was on the state streets. Like, that's all I knew. Southside. But for us, like, oh, he from the county, she from the county. No, nah, I'm going to deal with whoever because, you know, we, we, we are brothers and sisters. We all one, bro. It ain't, it ain't no separation. Like, none of that. Like, love is love wherever you go. Boy, Jesse, man, you know, real stand-up guy. He just opened up a, a hookah, uh, I want to say a hookah club. Uh, it's opening real soon. His grand opening coming, man. He real big on that love is love. It's my dog. You hear me? Yeah. Uh, shout out, uh, my big cousin, man, Cherokee boy and grill. You know, he holding it down on the South side, man. Go fuck with him. Get some of that barbecue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a lot of my partners that's owner ops. We're going to take it back to that. Cause I got a lot of partners out here, man. Like I'm real close to, so I talk to on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they own our ops. Shout out Buck. Shout out, uh, Bo. Uh, mm -hmm. shout out G5. Uh, that's my boy G Bell. You know, I talked about him earlier. Okay. Uh, uh, Thomas, uh, Sherry, you know, uh, uh, Brittany, Dre, uh, shout out my cousin Westside. He 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 up and coming. He he got the fleet of uh, box truck. Okay. Shout out Jeezy, man. Jeezy doing his thing. You know he over there at Lowe's and Home Depot. Okay. Like it, it it's major, bro. Cause it's like it, it's so big. Right. And, and and people didn't think like they can make it happen the way they make it happen. But these trucks is really making it happen. But don't right. get me wrong. It's a lot of bumps and bruises, like with the maintenance. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> the maintenance is something else, bro. Cause you right. gotta think. Uh, with these mechanics, they want 150 an hour. So if you take your semi or your box truck to go get looked at, you got to think about that. They might have it eight hours. They taxing you each hour. And mm. then on top of that, once they figure out what it is to get fixed, 
you got to pay that too. Right. On top of, you know, what they already looked at, the hours already kicked mm. in for that. So it's just a lot, you know, some people get in and be like, oh, well, I can do this. But when they see the bumps and bruises with the maintenance, the breakdowns, tires on them not cheap, you coming out of four or 500 plus for one tire. Right. You know, it's real, bro. Right. Yeah, like yeah. I say, if you can maintain and, and be consistent, and you know, know this, what you uh, really want to do, it's a million dollars easy in your account. Plus, right. yeah, because I think that um, a lot of people they want to get into it because of the money instead of you know really learning the craft of the business. Right, you right, know what I'm saying? Right. And um, you know, really thinking the uh, longevity wise. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But see, that be the thing too. That go back to what I just said. See, you got to really be with it. Like me, like my mm. heart with this. You hear me? Like, yeah. it's like, you know, it, it, it's like everyday basis. Like it, you thinking about it. When you wake up and you go outside and you get in your car and you hit these streets and these highways, what's yeah. the first thing you see? Right. You see semis, you see box trucks, you see buses, mm -hmm. like the CDLs, like, you know, and don't get me wrong. Uh, uh, it's more than that. You got the sprinter vans out here. You can do. You yeah. got fifteen pounds. It's different things you can do. It ain't just with the CDL, but at the same time, these big trucks is what's making the major money, bro. And right. that's where I'm headed. Like I say, you you can get with a company and you can still maintain and get paid, you know, weekly, and it'll be a good check. But ain't nothing like seeing what you can see in a week and a day. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing I want to say too, mm -hmm. man. Uh, while you got me in the interview, uh. Man, I got so many people that uh, reach out to me on the daily, mm -hmm. and uh, I help them. Like, I, I, I show them the ropes. Like, I help them get enrolled in school. You know, whatever I can do. Like, I get questions asked every day, whether it's a text, you know, um, FaceTime. I get phone calls. You know, I get three-way calls. Hey, can you help my son? Can you help my boyfriend, my baby father? Mm -hmm. Hey, okay. you know, it's just everybody reach out to me because they see where I came from. Like, a lot of people know, like, I really came from nothing, bro. Straight like, up. everything that I got now, I just want to thank God. Like, you know, I came a long way. It's just a good feeling. Knowing, mm -hmm. like, you can drive a truck, bro, and do what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, when I went to Miami back in November, it was my 30th birthday, bro. All that was truck driving money. Straight like, up. Like, I ain't put my hand out. I ain't get out here, rob nobody. I ain't get out here and steal. I ain't get out here and sell no dope. First right. thing I did was truck, hit that highway, hit them roads. Came home at night, stayed prayed up, and, right. and, and took me a nice trip. I was gone seven nights, bro. Yeah, and, yeah. and it was the best time of my life, man. Real talk. Um, would you say being away from? I know you got kids. That's the, that's the hardest part of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's 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 man. That's so hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why a lot of my partners, they you know, that's owner ops, they try to get a run where they can uh stay close to st louis yeah so we call that you call that dedicated mm -hmm. so basically dedicated. with the dedicated run you only running anywhere probably five seven hours out okay. maybe eight i'll say atlanta that's like a, a dedicated run okay so that's something you could hit there and back and be good memphis chicago kansas city indianapolis yeah. those are the short you know cities that's mm -hmm. close by so like you know you can still run up a bag yeah. amazon got something going right now with, with the shuttle yeah, you could just shuttle all day. You just pick, drop a trailer, pick up a trailer. You do that all day, and at the end of the day, they cut you three, four thousand. Yeah, I was so, doing that with my brother uh, this summer. You know what I'm saying? Just uh, yeah. hopping on with him on his routes. You know what I'm saying? Before that's he got, major. Before he got his full CDL and everything. Yeah, that's major, bro. Yeah, so I kind of got my getting my feet wet a little bit, oh, man. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, what do you enjoy most about being a truck driver? Because I would think that it would be the traveling. Yeah, it's the traveling, but like with me right now, like I say, I'm with Frito Lay, so I'm mm -hmm. local. Like yeah. I don't leave outside the border of St. Louis. Like I stay anywhere from St. Charles to South County radius, and I don't go past Collinsville or Belleville or Granite City. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, as far as my Illinois route, but I mean, like I say, I run ten, twelve hours a day. You know, uh, I like it. You know, I like to be on the road. You know, uh, I am a defensive driver, so I drive for me and the next person. And, like, in these trucks, you do got to pay attention. Yeah. It take a football field to stop, bro. Yes. Like, a lot of people don't mm. know that. We got what you call air brakes. It's not no regular, you know, uh, disc brakes or what you see on, on, on a Hellcat or a Scat Pack out here. Right. Like, it really take a, a hundred yards to stop. So, if somebody slam in front of my truck, 
you better know what you got to do before uh, it's too late. And mm. uh, you can kill somebody or kill yourself. But uh, other than mm. that, a lot of people are afraid of them. I tell mm. people every day, <laughs> if you can get up and jump in your car, you can get up and jump in that 18-wheeler. Because it's the same thing. And mm. you sit up high so you can see everything. And you can see a lot of things before it happens. So just pay attention. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Don't try to be in your phone. We do got uh, what you call truck driver headsets. You know, a lot okay. of people, you know, see you out in gas station stores, like thinking you talking to yourself or why he got that big old microphone. It's just, you know, it's a 24-hour headsets. They stay charged 24 hours. And that's how you communicate because uh, <laughs> yeah. they, uh, they got what you call DOT police. Yeah. And those are the truck driving police. So if DOT catch you with that phone, that's a three thousand dollar ticket. Mm. And if you don't pay mm. that in a certain amount of time, they'll come after your license, suspend them, or whatever they need to do, even revoke them. So it's just mm. like you don't want those penalties and everything held against your license, bro. It's not a good look. Right, you know what I'm saying? The unnecessary stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It ain't. It ain't. You don't want that. You said a three thousand dollar fine. Yeah. You know, mm. Describe how you've handled a breakdown or a setback. Uh. Man, I just had one. Uh, I was broke down uh, right here off 270. Uh, 270 in McDonald, man. I had broke down. And uh, actually, I had two flats. Mm. And I had to uh, get in contact with my manager. He called uh, Roadside. And uh, I sat out there eight hours. Mm. I mean, I charged them. You know, I charged my company for the wait time. But I sat out there eight hours. And this was just like two weeks ago. And oh, it was wow. probably 30 degrees. So it's like, you know. Mm truck uh, uh i had to shut the truck down throw my four way set my uh flares out you have to set your flares when you say you know and sound out there because mm -hmm. you gotta let the cars know you know that you are broke down so uh they have be aware once they uh get closer to you and you said you charge your company you know what i'm saying for your time yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, i charge yeah we do that you know uh yeah. at frito life i mean your wait time you know if you're waiting mm. to get in the dock at one of your mm. stops on your route you charge them for that. I mean, mm, so they're going your paycheck basically. Yeah, bro. you charge mm, them. That's cool. Mm. Yeah, you you charge. I mean, your time is everything. Right. So if you broke down waiting on a tow truck and it take four hours, mm. that's four hours they owe you. Yeah, yeah. Ain't no ifs, ands, mm. or buts. Right. Because I wanted to know, like, have you ever experienced a major problem with the shipment or anything like that? Uh, not really. But I'll say on an everyday basis that do happen. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because. Uh, loads get messed up every day i right. mean a lot of these different warehouses and stuff they use scanners yeah so these scanners might scan an item that's supposed to be on truck 194 and they put it on 164 right. because the scan read it wrong it's like robotic so right. sometimes stuff get mixed up like that but i right. mean uh only person really could catch is who you deliver it to because you're not going to go through all your freight before you check. You're going to just make sure everything looks like it's in place. Your load not going to be shifted, locked down, and nine times out of ten, once you close your door, you get a a, a, a lock put on it. Okay. And that's just, you know, so the uh, load don't be tampered with to make it uh, where it's going. And yeah, has um, the pandemic affected the business, you know? And then, uh, no, no, okay. no, no. Like, <laughs> like toilet tissue still got to get delivered, hand sanitizer, right. uh, 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 anything, masks, you know. Uh, yeah, they play with the airplanes, but ain't nothing like, you know, these roads. And, like, uh, mm. these truck drivers, like, man, we really go through it out here. Like, mm. it's really stressful. Yeah. You know, a lot of people just look at it, you know, like we said earlier, they get in it for the money, but it's a lot of ins and outs. Like, you really go through stuff on these roads. And, it, you know, you got some guys don't even make it home on holidays because they stuck in the next city due to uh, uh, the loads not ready on time, uh, due to uh, accidents, due to bad weather conditions. And, I mean, they'll flip over easy. So, you know, that could cost you your life. Yeah. So it's a lot with it, bro. Like ins and outs. Like you know, it's a lot of do's and don'ts. But you know, you just live and you learn every day. You get in that truck, you learn something new. Like my uncle, here he is that showed me the game. He been in over fifteen years, and he's still learning stuff every day. Right. And I'm gonna tell you, the hardest part about the trucking is bagging up. And yeah. I got that. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you though. Shout out my cousin. Uh, Cause I was asking you that. Yeah, about bagging up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, well, you can go out with your door. <laughs> no, no, I was saying uh, it's back enough the hardest part. And then uh, you, can go, you can elaborate more about James, too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Shout out, uh, shout out my bro, James, man. Mm-hmm. A.K.A. Duke. You know, uh, he had got me on at a yard jockey uh, job out in Pontoon Beach called mm-hmm. Laser Spot. Shout out him and Bo, both of them, you know, uh, put me on and stuff. And I became a supervisor eventually. But, uh, man, it turned me to a beast. And those two guys I just named. Mm-hmm. They showed me the game. Like, mm-hmm. I came straight out of school. I ain't even go over the road. Okay. So I came straight into the yard jockey because I wanted to get my bag up game down. But it, anybody can drive a semi. Yeah. Anybody can make a wide turn. Anybody can drive straight, put your blink on. When the time is right, get over in your next lane. Right. But everybody can't bag them up. You got guys that been in the game three, four years that still can't bag. And, like, when I say – wow. <laughs> I'm a I'm a dog. Like that's what we call that, bro. We mm-hmm. we call it dogs, bro. Cause we real dogs when it comes to this bagging up. <laughs> like I just feel I can do it from anywhere. I can do parallel bagging up. I can do offset. I can do straight back. I can do from one side of the lot to the next side of the lot. I can bag straight up and come around a, a, a corner. Like it's a lot of different things. But yeah, shout out to uh bro Duke, man. And uh, my boy Bo with that because they uh they got me right. I right, really came through and helped you out before I was oh, like yeah. getting it together. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Big time, man. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And any truck driver, like when you come in, uh, like you come in the truck driving business, that's the main thing they're going to talk about, bagging up. You're going to hear a lot <laughs> about bagging up. Oh, so it's just real big on that, man. But I mean, anybody can do it. Like I, I see females every day getting out here. Yeah, I was just going to say, man. Uh, I see a lot of females, you know, getting yeah. into this game. Like, for real, they turning up. Yeah. Couples, you know what yeah. I'm saying, doing yeah. it together. Yeah, yeah. It's major. Tag teaming is yeah. the best thing, uh, best way to go with the trucking, too. Because okay. the truck never stop running. Mm. So you think if you run your 11 hours, you go to sleep. Your partner jump in the driver's seat. He uh-huh. drive. Yeah, I didn't clear the 22-hour trip. Oh, right, y'all doing five and a half so hours a piece. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, it'll be more. Like you said, 11 hours. 11, yeah, because yeah. you still, you got to have a, Oh, okay, I was saying, like, he doing, like, five, and then, like, the other person doing five, yeah. something like that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yep, so, like, tag teaming, bro. Like, if you could find a partner and mm. that truck never stop, like, it, it, that that go back to my boy uh, TJ and uh, G. Bell. Like, both of them do that. Like, they, they truck never stop running until they make it back home. Straight up. Like, they going <laughs> city to city, load to load, until they make it back to their destination. Played a little ball coming up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, I come from City Rec, man. Coach Cheese. Yeah, Mike Tyler. Okay. Yeah, and uh, they still around, too, man. Like, Cheese just had my son a few years. Mm -hmm. I kind of pulled him off the team due to him, you know, undecided on if he really wanted to play. And I didn't want to force it. And uh, he was acting out in school. So, I told him academics and uh, uh, good grades is first before, you know, Mm -hmm. you uh, play football or any other sport. So, yeah, but shout out City Rec, man. That's where I come from. Uh, high school, I played uh, E.H. Lau. It was a new school uh, downtown off of Washington and Jefferson. Uh, I had got put out of there uh, for fighting, and I went over to uh, Triple C. They didn't have a football team. And the next year after I left uh, Triple C, it was a construction school. I went to Roosevelt and balled out. Okay, okay. And, uh, yeah, shout out Coach Campbell, man. He he was my uh, head coach over there. Man, what's going on with the the football programs, man? Cause um, oh yeah, it's crazy, bro. The schools combined or something like that. Yeah, it's crazy. Cleveland with them. Cleveland, yeah. Roosevelt is combined, and uh, so it's one team. Huh? Yeah, they mm-hmm. was trying to do like C A and Beaumont or C A and Sumner. So, and I don't know what they got going, but back then we weren't going, bro, cause we. Yeah. Once a rivalry, you always a rivalry. You hear me? Yeah. So we want to pick up with Vashon. Vashon, no, it was K's up for them, man. Yeah. We fuck with the V. The V had the ballers on the basketball and football, but they know, yeah. like, Roosevelt, man, we was PHL champs for a lot of years. Like, this before my brother and them, you know, this 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 was a long way. And uh, shout out Daryl Robinson, man. Yeah. That boy was a monster, man, like a little Ezeke back then. Mm-hmm. I seen him carry a whole... Uh, football team on his back i'm talking about the whole squad was on his back while he was running and uh yeah he he was major bro one of the top mm-hmm. running backs roseville ever had yeah uh, yeah could, could coaching be something you can see yourself getting into one day 
Oh yeah, yeah, most definitely. Me and my brother, uh, uh, Will. You know, a lot of people know him uh, on Facebook as Flowing Goods because yeah. he, you know, he good with his hands. You know, he in the construction field. He got his own business. He mount TVs. For sure. He do the floors, the drywall, anything. I'm gonna just say he gonna remodel, man. The boy, jack of all trade. That's my big brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I love him to death. And uh, he doing some big things with the kids, like. He got Southside organization that is his organization. He's not affiliated with nobody, none of that. Like he got this out the ground, and uh, he took over years ago when a uh, coach walked off on the team. Mm -hmm. My brother stepped up because his son was a part of the team, and he said, "Hey, they need a coach, so why not?" I did, you know, I played football my whole life. Why not do it? And my brother was real successful. He played quarterback and. You know, the whole nine yards, like, uh, growing up, he had an arm, and he played running back back in JFL. Okay. Basketball, he was a point guard and shooting guard. And that boy, yeah, he was a monster. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's what's up, man. How you feel about just St. Louis right now overall, man? Because, you know, I think something came out last year where uh, female, like, St. Louis led the nation in female entrepreneurs, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's major, man, like. From the from the hair shops to the uh, boutiques to the nails to the waxes, yeah, to you were selling dresses like, yourself for at one point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was doing it. I got into it, bro. Like it wasn't nothing I really wanted to do, but it was. I ain't gonna lie, it was a wave. Yeah, you got clientele, and and, and and I had a lot of clientele. I know a lot of females. I know a lot of guys in the city, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, why not jump out their head first? And I jumped out, man. I was successful with it, so I did my first order for like five hundred dollars. And I think I made back like thirty five hundred. So after mm. that, I'm like, okay, this is you know, this is a cool little side hustle. So I was driving trucks and doing my little side hustle with the female clothes, and yeah, I right. was real successful. And it kind of slowed up with the pandemic. You know, things got uh real tight out here, and you yeah. know, uh, people don't want to be so up close right now yeah, and shit. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of money issues going on, so I just kind of right. fell back. And uh, my last load uh, that I put in. I think I made like four grand mm. off like nine hundred dollars, mm. and uh, I ended up selling the last of uh, my inventory to a girl who just opened a boutique. Mm, okay, and I gave her a real uh, player price. Mm. You know, she was happy. I was happy, and yeah. uh, you know, I, I think about getting back into it. But if I do, yeah. I'm gonna probably do it for my daughter. It'll be some, you know, for Tanala. You know, I got one daughter. Uh, what I got, Therese, Trust. Uh, Lil Rail, and uh, I'm gonna run that back. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I right, know you get you can just say it all. Yeah, all yeah. right, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna jump back into that though, and I'm gonna get that to my daughter. Uh, her name Tanala, you know, that's my baby girl, my heart. Mm -hmm. She my only girl. I got uh, three boys, and you know, she she the one man. So, uh, whatever I do for as my next little local <laughs> business or up and coming, whether it's selling clothes or anything I'm doing, uh. Under that, I'm going to get her, and that's going to be her stuff. She going to run. Yeah, yeah. Full-fledged entrepreneur, man. You yeah. know, setting the uh, way for the, the, you know what I'm saying, the, the new generation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the, you know what I'm saying? Leaving a family legacy. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs>